What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 105.5 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. Man show, friend of the show, Coach Steve Smiley, North in Colorado, bears out of the Big Sky Conference. There's this beautiful gym behind him in the background. Coach, how you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing I'm doing good, boss man. I'm, that, now that's my virtual gym, right? So we're just we're just up here, just working, just plugging away, and and, and uh, things are good. Things are good. It's good to see you. Yes, indeed. You know what? I was thinking about it, man. This is going to your fourth year, man. Does it feel like yep. this is going to your fourth year, man, being the head coach out, out there, man? Yeah, it, I think we I think we talked about three or four years ago, and uh, it, it feels like it was three or four months ago. So, yeah, it, time flies, right? Fourth year, fourth year. Man, I'll tell you what, man, it's, it's funny how time, because it was the COVID year. You just got yep. Right after COVID, you just got hired, you know, we're trying to figure out this Zoom thing, man. And so for you mm-hmm. – uh. What's been the biggest difference difference for you going from 2020 COVID to now summer of 23? Well, I I think just kind of getting back to some normalcy, you know, obviously the the COVID year and then even the next year were so different uh, really in in every aspect of of, uh, our profession, whether it was recruiting, whether it was no no one in the gyms, um, you know, just all the different stuff. And then starting last year, I think it started to feel, you know, more normal again. Um, you know, now we're back on the road recruiting, obviously, and, and just things feel, like I said, probably just the words normal. First couple of years, and really that first year, getting hired during COVID, and then going through that year, just going back to the, you know, the nightmare of all the testing to be able to play. And I think we were getting tested three or four times a week, and any positive tests, like your whole thing shut down, like, you know, contact tracing, things like that. You know, that was such a big shadow over anything in terms of basketball. So just to get through that first year and and then start to build from there. But yeah, it's 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 been a wild ride for sure. Yeah, I, I can only imagine getting hired in the midst of the weirdest thing you ever that would ever in our society, mm-hmm. in a lot in our lifetime, please. Yeah. Trying to recruit basketball players, meet meet them virtually over Zoom and having to bring them together. I can only yep. imagine you thank God you was already as a assistant coach. I think that helped a yep. lot. You knew you knew to lay the land already, but if you had a couple going somewhere brand new. I don't want to imagine how that how that could, could have been. I think that would have been really hard. Yeah, I mean, I, at least being here for uh, you know for at that time four years with Coach Linder and and knowing what was going on internally, knowing the people on campus, huge advantage. Um, obviously, trying to sign kids like you said over the phone and Zoom and YouTube clips and synergy, it's better than nothing. But at the end of the day, we probably signed like. I don't know, five, six, seven kids during COVID. You don't really know. You know, you, you you think you know, but until they get up, you don't really know. So that was a little bit terrifying. But yeah, it's it's uh again just to kind of get through that and 
you know, you know, you just, you just push through it. And then eventually we've gotten out of that. Now, now we're back into that normal flow. And I will say this during COVID because you couldn't do anything, you know, you couldn't be on the road. You couldn't be in the gym in the summertime with your guys. Like you couldn't do anything like for all of us getting back to normal times, that COVID time, there was some good to it too, in the sense of like, everyone was able to kind of at least pump the brakes a little bit on, on these crazy lifestyles that we live. So um, there was definitely kind of a weird benefit to it, but now we're back to normal. We're just pushing ahead. And, and Coach Smiley, how was spring workouts for you, man? Kind of trying to get your returner, who you have coming back, guys, get them in the gym, get them in the flow, kind of get them for the, uh, that, that development plan for this summer. And now having them here with the guys who you were talking about who you signed coming in, best step together in the summertime, man. Outside of you, are you for the spring? What happened then? And now with the yeah. summer, the guys come in, who, who, who you signed? Yeah, spring, that's a good question. I mean, spring was different. Um, you know, and not just like guys going in the portal, but we had, you know, two really good players that, that uh, exhausted their eligibility, you know, Matt Johnson and Dalen Coons. And and then you add on a couple of guys that go in the portal. We do have eight guys that return, but, you know, there was a lot of talent that left. So like the spring workouts, we had great workouts, but you don't have a full team. Um, I think we had, like, like I said, eight dudes there. One of the guys was hurt, so I guess seven guys. And so they were small workouts, which I'm not really, you know, used to when you have the team setting. Um, it was a different vibe in the gym for sure. Got through that, you know, kind of as the dust settles in the portal and who you're going to sign. We ended up signing seven guys. Um, of those seven guys, I think we only signed one guy in the fall. So that's six guys in the spring, which was a lot for us. And so you got eight returners. You got seven new guys. And being able to blend those guys together, we, I think now we're you know pretty much in the tail end of our fourth week of workouts or fifth week. And I got to be honest, it's gone really good. Um, I, I really like the vibe of this team, but the returning guys, they understand what our standards are and our culture and things like that. They've done a, a great job of meshing with the new guys. So I feel really good about it. 100%. And, and you're not about those from playing. You have a player-led team and you got to coach the leadership effort, man. You have a good team. And, and to have guys who will accept their new teammates and not be like you wasn't here, I was here already. So to put their yeah. egos aside, man, at that age they are, man, it's commendable for them because you know how guys, the guys have egos, but to put it aside to say, hey, you're welcome to the, to the Bear family, we're family, it's, one, it's yeah. a beautiful thing. I think that's the hardest thing. I think it's going to get harder and harder for all of us coaches. You know, you throw in, you know, you might have to sign six, seven, eight, nine guys a year, which is just wild to me. It used to be like two, three, four. So that's a big difference. Like where you used to sign 20% of your team. Now you're signing 50% of your team. That's a big difference with your dynamics on such a small roster. Um, and so guys not being territorial is, is really important. And then you throw into it too, just all the different things. Now it's not just the transferring and stuff. It's, you know, now you get the NIL, you got all this different stuff as well. And there's a million things that could, you know, fracture or destroy a locker room. And so you're fighting that fight from day one. Like, how do we keep the team together? Um, and like I said, this being kind of the biggest incoming class that we've had since I've been here, at least in these last couple of years, it's definitely like something that you have concern about, but I, I'll give our guys credit. They've been awesome. You know, new guys and returning guys of really, really bonding together. We're, we're pretty intentional about trying to do some stuff off the court and without being cheesy or corny about it, but we try to do some stuff and our guys have done a great job of that as well in the summertime. And coach Molly Woods also this NIL just for, for portal. It's kind of a gift and a curse because now you can get in the room with high school guys you might not have been able to in the past yeah. because the big schools are trying to in the portal trying to find all the guys to fill in their gaps. But now you can get in with that proper high school guys. You can get high school guys that you maybe you wouldn't have get, gotten yeah. previously because of this whole portal thing we have going on there in NIL. No, that's true, and that's you know like not this past class, but uh, the class before. You know, we we went like when everyone was going zig in terms of trying to get portal guys, we went zag right. And we took a bunch of high school guys. And I think that was exactly what you're talking about, that we felt like we signed four high school guys that probably talent-wise were above our level. Um, did we take too many? You know, last year we struggled. And I don't, you know, blame those guys or the old guys. But what happened was those young guys, they surpassed a few guys in the roster. Now we are relying on, like, 18-year-old kids. In our league, like, the average kid was probably 21, 22, 23 and it's hard to be an 18-year-old kid and trying to compete against a 22-year-old, you know, borderline grown man. And so as we looked at it, we said, okay, maybe we took too many high school kids because that is the temptation. Like, hey, we can get involved with some kids we couldn't before. The scary thing, though, JR, is that if you take those kids, you take too many of them, knowing that everyone's trained now to like, hey, 
you know, whatever, show up, show out, get some stats, maybe they transfer. So you might put two years in recruiting the high school kid, develop them this, that, and then in their first and second year, which will never be their best year in college, right? But in their first, second year, and then boom, they're gone. And then you sit it, you're like, well, was that worth it? <laughs> you know, so there's no right or wrong answer. This year we went, a, you know, a lot different on, on our recruiting class. We did three portal guys, two JUCO guys, one high school scholarship guy, one high school walk-on guy. And so we're just – I think it's just kind of year-to-year based on what your team's needs are. 100%, like you said, man, you develop them real good, and those power five guys come poach, you know. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> you know, it's so – part of it, yeah. Yeah, it's like – so it's like at your level, man, it's, it's, it's so tricky. But the main thing about it is you're trying to win and, and get – and get, get make things happen out there, man. And your conference is, is truly tough. Like every every night is tough there, man. Like in the big sky, like people don't understand what you all the quality of basketball, man. It's fun to watch and it's tough every night for sure. It's, it's a real league, and, and and I think too, like going back, you know, just in my own little you know bubble, my own career that you know, when Coach Leonard's here, two of the best players that ever came through UNC, Jordan Davis. Uh, who now, I mean, he was a summer league guy. He's been an uh, ACB guy in Europe, made a ton of money. Jonah Radabaugh uh, as well, who's in the Euro League now. And then even going back when I was at Weber State, we had a guy, Joel Ballenboy, who was drafted. Those are the type of guys now that I'm sure they were getting, you know, recruited or whatever back then. But if they left, they had to sit a year and there was no NIL. You know, now it's not just, it's not just, well, NIL you can go somewhere you can play right away. Like there's, there's no penalty. Right. And and I'm not opposed to either one of those, but the game has changed. So if you have a really good player that you've developed in house, there's always the risk that they can go somewhere and play right away. And there'll always be someone that has, you know, bigger and better NIL, this whatever opportunities. And that's a problem. As a coach, you, you, you can't be blind to that. You just have to listen. This is the reality situation. How do we want to build our roster to at least try to combat that a little bit? But we're still, you know, we've got – the other thing for us, too, is that of the four high school kids, three of those four are back from last year, and we still believe, like, those are our developmental guys and they're doing a great job. So as we grow, th- grow them through, we're still trying to develop these high school guys. But you got to factor it in a little bit for sure. 100%. And you know what, man? Like like you said, man, this one is, this is of course, the nature of the beast now. But I do feel like guys like yourself who are leadership guys – the guys are likely to stay because they know that you have their back. You care about them besides just being their coach or get, getting you wins on your record. You care about them as young men and want to develop them as young men. So I feel like you guys like you said who are leadership guys or better chance of returning guys, so they won't jump ship unless it's just too crazy the money you get passed up. Yeah. But guys like yourself, man, who really care about guys and feel about building something with them, I think you have a better chance of keeping young men for sure. That you know, that that's obviously the hope, right? That you, you know, you put enough time in. Uh, you, you care about them more than just on the court. And, you know, they're just a number or whatever it is. Like you care about them graduating, you care about what's going on with their family. I think that, that those are really important things. And so you try to keep that going and hope that that relationship built can surpass the opportunity to, you know, transfer. The other thing is this too, that transferring doesn't necessarily mean success. And so it's like, Hey, look, like, you know, maybe player ABC transfer and look what happened to their career. Sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't work. Even though they went to some other spot, Maybe a perceived bigger school. Maybe it was a maybe it was a, a, a uh, disaster, as opposed to a guy like a Jordan Davis who's here for four years and now he's doing everything that you want to do. He's a pro. He's making money. All that different stuff. So you try to combat it with examples in your program as well, and, and, and at your level. You know, talking about you know Dame Lillard at Weber State, talking about you know John Morant, you know at uh, Murray State, you talk about all those guys too. CJ, CJ McCollum, you know Lee High. You try to use examples of guys that were mid-major guys that stayed through the course of it. Forget the portal, and, you know, NIL, and now they're they're all stars. There's a way to try to at least explain that to your guys, and sometimes it's just not enough, but you try. And Coach Molly, how much do you show your team about Denver Nuggets, man? Because I feel like that team this year is an epitome of what championship DNA is. Because yeah. you know, I'll go as have a Michael Porter Jr was not upset that Mike Malone benched him for, for Bruce Brown, who's playing so good. This guy's a man on a match contract. It's not upset that yeah. Michael Malone decided to go with Bruce Brown over him and how Michael Malone has a relationship with all of his players. He, he can coach them hard and still love them at the same time. So you just show you just that with your team show them as an example of what how you, what we can be looking at those, those guys in Denver, what they just did. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. Now in, in I'm a Nuggets guy. So like for sure, like we're gonna show up some Nuggets clips and we do a bunch of stuff with any any NBA team that that can um uh, really you know kind of touch on what we're trying to do because again, they will really watch, study, listen when we show them ideas, concepts, video, whatever of the teams and the players that they want to become, right? Like, okay, well, he's doing this. Uh, whether it's you know, like I said, Nuggets is a great example. Michael Malone, that's a great example right there with, with you know, Porter not having the ego to fight that. Okay, Bruce Brown's playing better right now. Um, we do that all the time. You know, we just did a – we showed him just about five-minute podcast yesterday. Uh, Sean Livingston was on a podcast, and he was talking about when Kevin Durant got to the Warriors and how it was just about winning. You know, what about his ego and this and that? Like, that was already done. How does he fit in with Steph and with Clay and Draymond and those guys? And all he wants to do is win. And so you try to sprinkle that stuff in with the guys they really look up to for sure. 100%. And I love how Michael Malone plays that that chess. His adjustments he makes. And, you know, I yeah. was noticing game three, is of having Braun or Brown and Gordon at three point, he had him cutting to the basket behind yeah. the defense and getting those easy, easy layups. So I'm like, I love watching what he does. I love talk. I love when he plays the Hawks, man. We have to go talk to him. Now, Coach Mike is shocking, but we, somehow we, we we beat them this year. Hey, I, <laughs> with, hey, I believe it. <laughs> with, with about Trey Young on the court. So, but in the Miami Heat, too, we'd be able to play in game somehow. So the yeah. two teams, <laughs> we beat them with our, our struggles. I know we have struggles that we have. But you know, we we beat them. But the NBA is like I said, it's really a make make a miss league. And if, and if you if you own that night, oh, yeah. you can get. Beat. Everyone's got guys. <clears throat> Everyone's got guys, right? Yeah, there's no doubt. But now that Nuggets team was special this year. It'll be interesting to see how it goes moving forward. But I, I'm really excited. I, I'm from Denver, so like it's it's it was a long time before we got that thing done. Well, Nate, did, you, did you go to in, in the games during the playoffs? I did. I I only went to one, but I went to uh, game two of the Suns. And it was kind of an ugly game. It was a low-scoring game, but it was a great game. And it just the, the energy and the, and the the atmosphere in there was crazy. It was awesome. No doubt, man. No doubt, man. But I remember going to Ball Arena when it, when nobody was there. Seeing it, no, seeing it, yeah. seeing it feel the way it was. Those fans in Denver, man, is it's, it was cool to see that, man. Because they even deserved it. Mike, Mike, Mike Malone deserves it. My guy Popeye Jones deserves it, who I know yeah. very well, man. So, yeah, man, it was really cool to see them get that win, man, because, you know, the Miami Heat are, are my are division rivals. I don't care. I'm glad they lost. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yes, yep, it, yep. it was fun, man. It was fun to see that, man. <laughs> so let me ask you, man, like, um, for your for, for your young guys and your returners, man, so this summer, man, I, um. Are you are you trying? Are you having to put some stuff in, or are you really just trying to work, work on working that games right now? Uh, so it, it's a good question. It's pretty much a balance. <clears throat> so I think in the past, if you had you know twelve of your fifteen guys back or whatever, <clears throat> maybe it's a little bit more about just skill work development. When half your team's new, now we're incorporating <clears throat> a little bit more of our team stuff as well. So for us, you know, a typical week we only have four hours of of uh, Kara with these guys. So when we're with them, we might do like a mini practice, you know, incorporating some stuff and then maybe a skill day, another mini practice. And then one thing we do a lot in the summer is we scrimmage, you know, where I really don't stop it that much. You know, we'll stop it, bring them together, whatever, drop a play. But <clears throat> we want to learn, too, if and we do that at, 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 at the end of the week. So <clears throat> after a couple of days of practice, skill work, whatever, we will go through play and then we use that film. Right. Like, OK. Player A, B, C, who, who's learning the stuff? Who's carrying over the stuff that we emphasized early in the week to an actual game setting? And I, I think for us, the summertime can get long, man. Uh, the fall, like we're around these guys so much. So in my opinion, and who knows if I'm right or wrong, but if you just practice, 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 um, <clears throat> I think it, 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 it can wear itself out. But when the guys know <clears throat> that they can get in there and they can, uh, you know, they're, they're going to scrimmage, they love it. You know what I mean? They love it. And, and, and we can learn so much, you know, from just having them play. It's not like we're running a bunch of stuff, but trying to just, you know, incorporate a couple of concepts on O and D throughout the week and just, okay, are we getting just a little bit better? And studying that film has been great for us. So I, I've really enjoyed the way that we do it. 100%. And you know what, man, I think that's fun because I, I don't know when I've played, I, mm -hmm. I love scrimmage time. I, I guess it's oh, yeah. doing the same Drill, say it's, it's right. It's, you're right. It gets when guys it gets boring. You keep it interesting and new. We'll be we'll be more engaged. I think I think you have the right formula. I know as a former player, man, I would like that more than just 
running drills for an hour. <laughs> yeah. well, well, I think I look back like last year, I think we ended up having like 112 official practices. If you can't get your stuff in and <clears throat> get your stuff in in over 100 practices during the year, you're probably not doing it right. So I know that we got so much time in the fall. And then when, when practice hits that got to find a way to make this fun. Now you got to work. We got to compete. We got, we got to mess our team together. We still got to learn stuff. You can learn stuff right away. So we're trying to find that fine balance, but I know that for them, they know that they're going to get some scrimmaging in and, you know, and they can download the film and watch themselves too. And they love watching themselves. Right. So like it's, it's, I think it helps our learning curve. And again, we started doing that, um, you know, I don't know, maybe last year or two. And, and I think it's worked well to make the summer a lot more fun. And I think we get a little bit ahead of the curve on it. No doubt. And I, I feel like this time you only got one class or so, so you can really yeah. be, a, be a basketball player. You don't have to worry about study halls and test yep. minutes. So this time of year, I loved it because I had to worry about school too much during this time. Right. Of year. right. Yeah. No, this is a great time for, I mean, now for us, when they get in like the next day in early June, it's camp. And so nine of our first 10 days together, we all work camp and then we still get our workouts in, but it's busy. We're already through camp season. So now and there's obviously, uh, obviously some recruiting that us as coaches, we got to go out and see stuff in June and July. But with camp season done now, the focus is so much more on the guys. And so I think that's been a good thing for sure. Well, will you, will you be at Lake Point? Yes. I'll be at Lake Point. I'll be at Lake Point. Um the 8th and the 9th, I think. Uh, I'll, be I'll see you. Here. I'll be out there. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, I'll be there watching some kids. And I know I can't talk about recruits, but I'll be out there watching my son, too. My son will be out there. So get a chance to not only recruit, but watch watch my my young man run around a little bit. So it, it's it, it, it's it's a trip that I'm definitely excited about. Yeah, I'll look forward to seeing you. I, I, I'll be oh. there all, all days of the Army event. <clears throat> then I go to NBA Summer League in Vegas after that on, on yep. Monday the 10th. So Perfect. That's perfect. So, good. So, so yes, man. I look forward to seeing you, man. But coach, about us good to chat with you on the show, man. It's good to see you, man. I, I enjoy our, our vibe. I, we have, have yeah. great conversations on the show, man. It's always fun, my guy. Always good to see you too, boss, man. Let, let me know if you need anything else, but but uh, we'll probably see you soon. All right, buddy. I'll see you soon, man. You be safe, man. Okay. All right. We'll see you. All right. What's up, good people? But online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BELIEVE. B-L-E-A-V for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 105.5 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show. Twitter at Boss Man Show and Facebook Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King.